My name is Vahid Chitos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being there this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. And let us know where you're tuning in from. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Dimitri Genitos. Uh, we're from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and uh, I'm a local real estate agent here. Awesome, awesome. So what I want to do is I got some questions for you, and I want to deviate from real estate. Ooh, I want to okay. ask about your experience because based on watching your IG page, you're doing a fantastic job, a lot of good content there. But I want to ask, what does it take to be an entrepreneur, especially in real estate? Uh, because a lot of people look at the glamour and they think it's easy, especially you make it look very easy. So we gotta, you got to change and show, show them underneath the hood, let them know that it's not always, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. So For sure. What does it take to make it as a real estate agent, as an entrepreneur also too? You, I feel like anyone who's doing any sort of entrepreneurial stuff, you got to be a little bit crazy. You got to be a little bit nutty. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's fitness, real estate, um, any sort of business, you've got to be completely engulfed in it and just super passionate about it to the point where like, it literally consumes almost every second of every single day. And if you're into that, then being an entrepreneur is for you. If you're not into that and you just kind of want to have some time to chill and watch TV and hang out, and whatever, then I would say go get a job because you're you just you know it, you're not cut out for it. Then right? you're right? a rain cold blooded real estate agent, man. You I'm, just lay, you just told everyone to just go, just go get a job. That's it. Which so, is a fact. If yeah. if if you can't be comfortable. At the same time, uncomfortable. Like if you're looking to have, because I see that a lot of financial um, independent individuals that are in business for themselves, at some point, they will put the images out there that shows that they're having fun, they're having good time. But that wasn't the case when they started at the beginning. Like I got a buddy of mine who's, who's, who was in real estate for almost 15 years. And he got, he got to the elite part. And, you know, one day I said, you, you're living the life. He's like, where were you when I was knocking 100, 200 doors every day in the sun, rain, this? He goes, I've got more rejection than anybody else could possibly even handle. Like, he's gone to, I mean, he actually had people pull out a gun on him a few times because he knocked on the people's door. So I when you that. see the glamour, you got to also look at it. That what did it take? Because I'm not interested at that. I'm interested at what it took. Right. So you just and and it's so funny that you you said that because like I've got so many people uh, who who reach out and they're like, hey, you know, I watch your stories. You know, I, I see you on YouTube, whatever. And uh, I want to be a real estate agent, and it looks like it's great. And and like when I got into it, I was watching Million Dollar Listing. I was like, yeah, who doesn't want to drive a Rolls Royce, suit up? And, and sell some $3 million houses. And it's just not like that at all. And, uh, you know, thanks that, you, you know, you said that I make it look easy and I make it look, uh, I look fun, but there is a ton of rejection in it. And, and to the point where, like, you get to a point where you either quit or you just become numb to it. And, and even, you know, when I started in real estate, I kind of just thought, you know, I'll be a real estate agent. All my friends will use me. Word will get out and, and so forth. And, yeah, I mean, if you get your license, you might get a deal or two from friends. But if you want to really get some sales done and, and get a career going, you need to put yourself out there. And that comes with a ton of rejection. Even like Instagram. I remember when I started doing these real estate stories, I was like, I felt dumb. Like, I felt like. I'm putting all this content out there and I don't, you know, are people interested? Are they not interested? Are they like, Oh my God, here he goes again. But now it's just to the point where I don't care. Like, you know what? This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I am putting out for content. And if you don't like it, by all means, unfollow me. But what I've realized is a lot of people do like it and they find it interesting and they keep watching and they may be looking to buy or sell, you know, now or five years from now. Sometimes they might just swipe and, and keep it moving. It might not be something that they're interested in. But when the time does come for them to make a move, I guarantee you that I'm on top of their mind because the consistency of putting it out there every single day. And 
and it's easy because I genuinely do love what I do. So it's that's totally. I mean, think about it. You go. I mean, I I know my wife does this a lot, and I and I passionately hate it. I go to mall. I know exactly what I want, and when they move the shelves, I get pissed off. Like right. I know exactly what I need. I go in there, take it, do whatever, pay for it. Thank you very much. I'm out. You're but my wife doesn't do that. She goes actually shopping. So she's, I call it window shopping. Right. So she does that. But you don't see the business owner or the employee that's behind the window saying, oh, my God, this girl just passed by my window. She looked. She liked it. But then she rejected me. She left. She didn't come in to buy it. So right. in a lot of other businesses, they go through that and it's normal. So why would entrepreneurs, I mean, if everybody went to the mall and bought everything that they saw, Right. Like, there will be no mall. Like, we'll have other issues, you know? <laughs> so it's like... It's that's like, that's, Amazon, know, like, that's like, Amazon's business model. There's no rejection there. They just keep scrolling, and then they just buy whatever they want. So, I mean, you just got to... I mean, you got to think about it. Like, I'm probably the worst person that you want to deal with when you want to buy a house, especially if you have to deal with me and my wife. Like, we got two total different opinions of what a house and a home should look like and be it's right. completely different so I, I i think the agent is gonna have a hard time so it's gonna be one of those tough skin agents yeah where they don't mind it where they're so passionate and they're gonna take all the bullets we're gonna throw at them so listen it's welcome to business yep and, and especially with real estate like in that case you know you, you get some clients that are better than others right and it's just a matter of being patient. And especially if it's someone who's looking to live in the property, like I can only sell it so much. Like I always say that, that my job, uh, our value as agents isn't to like, I, I feel not like to push properties on people that they don't want to buy. It's, it's to help them find the property that they want. And then when they do find that property, it's to make sure that we negotiate the best terms for them and, and just make sure that it is, you know, a safe investment. And, you know, let's say me, me, you, and your wife, we all, we go look and say we look at a hundred homes. We look at a hundred homes and I can tell you, hate every single one of them and you guys are bickering, arguing. But then we walk into that one that you guys, I see, I see the signs, you know, I see the starry eyes. That's when I can start like, you know, selling because it's like, I know that you guys want it. And a lot of people, depending on the person has uh, a fate, like a buyer's remorse almost. You ever get that where you go looking for something and then you find exactly what you want and you try talking yourself out of it. That's when, you know, the, the sales techniques come where it's like, okay, reassuring you that this is what you want and getting them through that phase. Cause especially in real estate, it's a big investment. So, you know, getting your clients through that phase is a lot of what we do. And it's a lot of, it, it's value, you know, it, it is. I mean, listen, I think real estate is one of the hardest things to do. In my opinion, tough. because you got to have the eye, you got to see, I mean, they, you got to kind of, they got a picture, they got an imagination in their mind of what they want. You yeah. got to extract that and then find it and then yeah. put it in front of them. That, I mean, I don't think I have the talent for that. I, I mean, it, to me, it's very difficult because, I like what I like, and I think everybody else should like what I like. Right. But that's not the case. They're going to live in it, not me. So they got to like it and love it. So here is my other question for you. How do you keep yourself as an entrepreneur and real estate agent up to date? What are some of the methods that you use to stay relevant? Because if you're going to put stories and content out in any social media, you're going to get called out if your shit is not up to date. Yes. Like, you can't be talking about stuff that happened five years ago. Like, yep. You got to talk about stuff that happened like two days ago. Exactly. So gotta, what are some of your techniques that you could teach us how to do? Well, and it's actually good that you said that. So before I started doing these Instagram stories and the content regularly, it, it is hard to stay up to date because, you know, like say you got a client or a couple of clients, you know, you're just starting to get your business going. And, you know, unless you just stare at your laptop you know, you're, you're going to miss stuff where it's like when I started doing this content, you know, I, I had quite a, you know, I only had a few clients and I was building my business and the content forced me to stay up to date. Like it held me accountable. I was like, okay, every single day I'm going to post something real estate related. I'm going to try to give value as best I can for free for anybody who wants it. And sometimes like even to this day, like let's say, you know, I don't see anything interesting happening in the market or, or nothing that I really feel like sharing. 
I go on my laptop and I go find something interesting. Check out this house that somebody flipped. Can you believe this? Or this is what's going on with the rental market or, or whatever. But holding yourself accountable and like, and, and for me, these Instagram stories, the content, it forces me to, to stay relevant. And I'm on top of things so much more because I told myself I have to post about it. That's my job. Some people, they'll cold call. Some people will door knock. Some people will send out flyers. They'll be on buses. Whatever your hustle is, that's your hustle. My hustle is the Instagram. It's the content. And I need to stay up to date so I can give value to people. So that's, it, it's actually become a tool to help me stay to date rather than, you know, the other way around, if that makes sense. That does it. And, and listen, by the way, I watched the New York listing or LA listing, all these different Bravo shows that they got. I, I get a snips out of it over here. Yeah. But I feel like I'm not looking at it for, and, 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 and we always argue with my wife about this. I don't watch it for the entertainment. Right. I'm watching how they're conducting themselves. How did they sell? How did they do this? How did, and, and, and you'd be surprised that sometimes I pick up and I'm like, this guy just walked into this house. He knew what kind of stupid bricks it was, what kind of a granite it was, what kind of this was, where was this shit from? Like, he went and dissected the bathroom. Oh, this is French, this is Italian, this shit. And I'm like, this takes, like, effort, energy, like, knowledge, education. You got to be in it. You like, gotta know your how do you know these things? Like, you got to, it's, it's tough work. Like, you would think that they just, you know, put on the, the suit on and go in there and everybody comes in, here's my $5 million, sell me a house. That's not the case, man. You got to be on top of your stuff. So when I see that, now is no longer entertainment. I see someone being good at their craft and being part of the elite group. And obviously, they put on the show. That's part of it. It's cool. I'm all right. You know, this, this. They got their personal drama, which has nothing to do with selling homes. Nothing. Like, I can't. I don't give a shit who's your girlfriend, who's your boyfriend. Like, it don't matter to me who you're sleeping with. Like, go do what you want to do, right? right? But I'm looking at that as non-entertainment, as knowledge. Let me consume a little bit how they're doing that. Do you look at it like that or do you look at it for the fun? <laughs> so, I mean, I will say, okay, I said earlier that when you're an entrepreneur, you need to be a little sick about it. And I can tell that you're a little sick about what you do because when you watch Million Dollar Listing, you're dissecting these guys' sales techniques rather than watching it for the entertainment value. That show is scripted. Uh, that being said, you know, when Josh Altman hops into a luxury property, he knows his stuff. You know, that's how he got to the point where he could do a reality show on it. He had to know, you know, what type of countertops, the floors, the marbles, the this, the that. And, and it really depends what you're selling. If you're selling luxury real estate, you need to know your stuff. If you're selling investment properties, you need to know your numbers. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of knowing your product and, and being able to, to sell it. But uh, the million dollar listing stuff, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely staged. Uh, but I, I mean, I love it. Who doesn't love watching it? Um, no, it, it, it's, it's a good show. It's Listen, too- sometimes you just got to have fun with it. But you want to know something? Even if it brings in a little bit more awareness about what does it take, because yeah. none of those guys were – they're not here today because of what they did today. Right. They're here because they've earned it and they worked hard. It. And that goes with any craft. That goes with yeah. anything. Sometimes you don't glamorize it, but, you know, I've gone to print shops where I feel like, wow, this guy is on top of his game. Like, this guy, no. I've gone to the dry cleaner. Like, I had, like, the most interesting conversation with this guy who brought equipment from Germany and made it, you know, green for U.S., and he did all of these things that was efficient. So now he's a story saving money and he's giving that saving back to, you know, his customers and yeah. his prices are lower than everybody else. But the quality of the product is superior to, I mean, we were talking about it and you're like, this guy is excited about a washing machine. Like, yeah, I did that. but this guy was in, he's like, yeah, the water goes in here. We do this. This is the chemical we use. We get this chemical from Italy because it, it. I mean, this guy was on, I was like, I don't understand any of this shit, but you're my dry cleaning guy. Like right. I'm coming to you. Like it seems, it looks seems like you know what you're doing. I like that because the last dry cleaning, the guy didn't even say hello to me. Right. Let alone Bare giving minimum. me education on yeah. how these big equipments work. So I was like, this is the elite guy. This is why this place is being ran like this. Yeah. And there's no reality show about that. 
No. <laughs> and I, I mean, I feel like, you know, being, everybody's got this preconceived idea these days about being an entrepreneur and how it comes with Lambos. It comes with, you know, crazy houses and it's got to be blasted on Instagram. But most of the greatest entrepreneurs you've never even heard of. And it could be your dry They're cleaner. They're not even on Instagram. Yeah, Most of them are not even on Instagram. It could be your dry cleaner. Like, you know, and if it was, you know, if it was up to me, um, I'm the kind of guy I, I actually do like to kind of fly under the radar. It just so happens that I've, I've found myself in a position where, uh, you know, I've got a following and I was like, you know what, I, I'm going to sell real estate and I'd be stupid not to, to post about it. But, you know, I, I respect those people who, who fly under the radar. They're, they're absolute masters at their trade. Oh, and those are the snipers, man. Those, those are the, are the snipers. snipers. Those are the ones, those are the watch snipers. Those are the ones yeah. that I'm trying to find so that I can sell them houses because those are the guys with money <laughs> and, they, and they want to invest. Love but, it, but, love like, it. but like you were saying, like, you know, you said, this is my dry cleaner. This is my dry cleaner. When I walked in, he's talking about chemicals. He's talking like you don't even really care what he's saying. You're just like, damn, like this guy's a little weird, but if I'm going to trust anybody with my clothes, it's that guy. And that is essentially like, you know, for me, that's what I'm trying to do with my Instagram. I'm, you know, whether you're actually crunching the numbers with me on my stories about, you know, a 30% return, a 28% return, it's irrelevant. You're just clicking and, and you see that like, you know, we know what we're talking about. We're passionate about it. And when the time comes that you need someone, you've built trust through you know just every day being consistent he's there he's in it like and and that's why you get the trust and listen that builds trust in the marketplace now you're building your reputation so i mean it, it's it's for long term if you are going to become an entrepreneur and you're planning on doing a hit and run for one year two year five year like it's better not to do it right like, it's cool that's your i mean that's your, your choice you want to do it, but to me your, yeah. it's it's long-term game. It like it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, it and is. marathon is like 26, 27 miles, right? So it's not like something short-term. You got to think long-term. And if every entrepreneur taught about long-term relationship and long-term business, the things that they would do today will completely be changed. Yeah, the way they conduct themselves, the way they go about their business will be upgraded because now they're not thinking about making money. This Today. year, they're trying to make money for the next 20, 30 yeah. years yeah. and possibly leave a legacy and turn that over to their family member. And that's why you see so many of these big companies have been passed on. And if you look at it, there was a visionary at work there where they didn't think about one year, two year, five year profit. They were thinking yeah. long term. Yep. And that's what I think more people should be striving to think about and implement in their business. Especially in anything that's like face-to-face -face, uh, sales, like real estate, obviously. Um, it, you know, if you're looking for the next paycheck, the next commission, like, you know, you're gonna get used and then dropped. And it's funny, cause I see, like say, in, for instance, I see flips all the time where somebody bought the property last summer with an agent and then now they're selling it with a totally different agent. And we're talking six months later. It's like, well, what happened? You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to make sure, and I, I don't care if, if I got to, you know, do whatever to, to just get the business, earn your trust, and I'm going to have that repeat business. You're not going to think about the next person or the next deal. It's just an automatic. You're my guy. That's my dry cleaning guy, right? And, and, and those are the people that last, the people that chase down the next sale. It's just, you're in a dangerous position and you're going to get forced out real quick. Because especially like even times right now, when push comes to shove, you know, COVID-19, whatever, sales are down and you're, you're tracking, you know, business right now. There's no business right now, you know, there, there's very little, right, in comparison. So your business struggles where when you build a, a strong foundation based on like, you know, just being in like integrity and just doing the right thing, people start talking. People tell each other, I'm not, I promise you, never buying a billboard. And I hope this doesn't get played back one day where I buy a billboard, but, you know, I, I don't want to buy a billboard, you know, like the clients. I, don't, I think with social media these days, you, you shouldn't don't have to. to. You don't need to. There's free ad space everywhere. You just have to yeah. earn the eyeballs. You just got to earn the eyeballs and, and get those people to actually want to see what you're doing. 
Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy day and being with us. Hopefully, we can do a lot more because I know a lot of people need to get educated. I think purchasing a home or a house or investment property is probably one of the biggest purchases we do in our lifetime. And I think people need to be educated. Thank you yeah. so much for putting the content. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more with you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You got it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Later.